Line. Let's bring in Evercore ISI Vice Chairman Krishna Guha talk about your your reaction to Bostic and whether or not you think he speaks for the majority of the committee. Thank you. So it's great to see you guys again. Enjoy the interview with Raphael. So what we're learning here is, first of all, that although you could make a pretty good case, I think, for taking a timeout in May and penciling in a hike in June, that's not where the committee's at. There is a broad strengthening consensus on the committee. Let's do that 25 in May. The debate, I think, is really going to be about the signal they send as to what happens next, how pausy the language is versus how much of a bias to being ready to do more uh, they convey in the statement and the press conference. You had Chris Waller, Governor Waller, on Friday sounding really very hawkish. Uh, suggesting for him it's at least one more I can you know sort of imply that he might see June as a 50 50. I think Raphael Bostic is much closer to the middle of the committee in saying you know okay the real-time indicators around the banks are looking a bit better I'm going to be comfortable doing that next 25 in May but then I'd like to take a time out look around see what's happening and I think that's essentially where the committee's going to end up. Um, I would view May as one and probably done, although they'll try to make us believe that, you know, they're certainly not done for sure. I think the big wild card, Krishna, is nobody knows how fast inflation comes down from here. He, he's worried that it's sticking. They all, they're all worried that it's sticky because they're so traumatized that they were wrong on the transitory call. When, you know, you talk to folks in the market and some of them say, look, inflation expectations have come down. They need to be more worried about the economy and what's happening in the banks than, than inflation. And they're just not. So you're right. They're still very fixated on inflation. Secondly, they're taking a lot of comfort from the high frequency readings around the banks. The fact that the use of the Fed emergency liquidity facilities is off the peak. The fact that we saw deposits bounced back a little bit last week. In fact, we haven't seen any more bank failures. I think that's all encouraging, all positive. But I think it would be a big mistake to conclude, and therefore, this whole thing is over. You know, President Bostich talked about the end of the acute phase of the bank stress. I think that's right. But I think we're into the chronic phase now. And, you know, we may be only in the second, third innings of this in terms of banks uh, turning very cautious, tightening lending standards, and that gradually putting the squeeze on SME and commercial real estate lending. You wouldn't expect to see that in the data before 8, 10, 12 weeks after the event. So we shouldn't take too much comfort from the better real-time reads today. I do think, personally, that we're still looking at a sizable credit squeeze. I would note that, of course, the Fed staff, the career staff, back at that March meeting seemed to have a much darker take on things uh, in terms of the credit squeeze and growth than the Fed. But you're right. The big debate in the end is about how sticky this inflation is. My hunch is it'll still be sticky for another quarter or two, but late this year, early next, I personally see that disinflation moving faster uh, than the Fed anticipates, still with poor PCE down to the to, you know, three or the very low threes uh, by the end of this year. If my more optimistic view, the market's more optimistic view on inflation is right, and in particular, if at the same time, you are seeing that mild recession finally start to unfold, I still think you can get, will get, um, one cut, possibly two cuts in the very final part of this year.